Hello everyone. Welcome to Locomotion, trains in the movies and the stories behind them. I'm your host, Robert Diepenbrock. As a special effects artist and director, I know that what goes on behind the cameras can be as compelling as the movies themselves. And like many filmmakers, I love trains. Hop aboard and we'll discover together the fascinating history of trains in the movies, how they were made, and the artists who created them. Regarded today as one of the greatest American films, The General certainly ranks among the best railroad movies ever made. In part two, we'll explore how Keaton's film and the real Civil War engines from the great locomotive chase were very nearly lost forever, how they were saved from destruction and finally restored, what happened to the engines Keaton used to film The General and other movies shot on the same Oregon Railroad. In 1927, the same year The General was released, the movie world was transformed with the premiere of Al Jolson in The Jazz Singer. Overnight, talkies were all the rage, and many silent film stars, including Keaton, were suddenly passé. In 1928, Keaton produced Steamboat Bill Jr. Despite amazing stunts, the box office performance of the film was disappointing. This, combined with the cost overruns and losses from the general the year before, spelled the end of Keaton's career as an independent filmmaker. His brother-in-law, producer Joseph Skank, dissolved Buster Keaton Productions, and Buster was forced to take a creatively restrictive deal at MGM, where he was relegated to appearing in unmemorable roles or gag writing for other comics like the Marx Brothers. Well, I really got my goat at MGM were comedians like the Marx Brothers, who never wrote their own jokes. The golden years of 1930s Hollywood were not kind to Keaton. In 1932, his wife Natalie Talmadge, sister of actresses Norma and Constance Talmadge, divorced him, taking custody of their two boys, his entire fortune, and the palatial Beverly Hills Italian villa he had designed himself especially for Talmadge. In 1934, his contract with MGM was terminated and he was forced to declare bankruptcy. Keaton battled alcohol and chronic depression until at age 42 he met Eleanor Norris, a 19-year-old MGM contract dancer. Despite their age difference, they married in 1940. Her encouragement helped him quit the booze and stabilized his life. Their marriage lasted 26 years until his death. The new medium of television led to a rediscovery and revival of Keaton's talents and career in the 1950s. Performing before live audiences put Buster back in touch with his vaudeville roots and he flourished. Guest star appearances on TV shows like Candid Camera were perfect for Keaton's sight gags. The Coronet Theater in Los Angeles was one of the early art houses showing classic silent movies. In 1954, Keaton's wife Eleanor learned they were screening The General and persuaded the shy Buster, who never watched his own films with an audience, to accompany her to see it. Theater owner Raymond Rohauer met them and the conversation soon turned to Buster's films. Keaton had a few old negatives of his pictures, including Sherlock Jr. and Steamboat Bill Jr., but he didn't see much value in them. Rohauer assured him they were worth saving and proposed that they have the fragile nitrate films transferred to safety stock to prevent further deterioration. British actor James Mason purchased Keaton's beloved Beverly Hills Italian-style villa in 1952. He discovered a safe in a shed that had been used as an editing room. It contained reels of film left there by Keaton, who had totally forgotten about them. As with the films Buster had, the reels from the safe contained nitrate stock, which were in various states of decomposition. Mason donated the negatives to the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. The films were carefully restored and transferred to safety stock. An original of the general was discovered among the decaying reels of film and saved. A few more years without restoration, and Keaton's films would have been lost forever. As Keaton's movies were shown, they developed a growing, devoted following. Interest in Keaton's films was particularly strong in Europe. 
In 1962, Rohauer arranged a tour of 27 German cities. Keaton chose to screen his favorite film, The General. To promote the showings, Rohauer hired an old German steam locomotive and had the General plaque mounted on it. Buster proposed he drive the locomotive into the various stations. The nervous German train crews didn't realize that Keaton had driven steam locomotives 40 years before while filming The General. Keaton's silent film gags and stunts didn't rely on dialogue and crossed the language barrier. The General had the German audiences in stitches. In 1965, Buster and his wife Eleanor were honored at the Venice Film Festival. Knowing he was nervous in crowds, Rohauer set up a surprise. Without telling Buster, he ushered him through a door where he was greeted by a packed auditorium who on seeing Keaton on stage immediately rose to their feet in thunderous applause. A startled and tearful Keaton slowly made his way to the dais, sat down, and simply said, Good to see you. Keaton died in 1966 at 70 years old, having lived long enough to see his films saved from destruction and survive to achieve the worldwide recognition they deserve. I think I had the happiest and luckiest of lives. Maybe this is because I never expected as much as I got. Buster Keaton. If you haven't viewed the general Buster Keaton's silent masterpiece part one, give it a look and learn more about how the film was made. Like Keaton's movie, the two real Civil War engines from the great locomotive chase, the general and the Texas, came close to being lost forever. Through an amazing series of events, both survived and exist today. The General was built in 1855 by Rogers Ketchum and Grosvenor in Patterson, New Jersey for the Western and Atlantic Railroad. A 440 American type with 60-inch drivers, she was designed to haul passenger trains between Atlanta, Georgia and Chattanooga, Tennessee. In 1864, the General was nearly destroyed during the Battle of Atlanta in an explosion deliberately set by retreating Confederate General John Bell Hood's troops to prevent railroad equipment from falling into the hands of General Sherman's advancing Union Army. After the war, the badly damaged General was repaired and in the 1870s was rebuilt to burn coal, including a new boiler and diamond stack. Pictures of the General at an 1888 reunion of Andrews Raiders shows these modifications. The General was retired in 1891 and stored on a siding in the Western and Atlantic Rail Yards in Vinings, Georgia, across the Chattahoochee River from Atlanta. It was brought out of retirement and returned to a Civil War era wood-burning configuration with a balloon stack for the 1893 World's Columbian Exhibition in Chicago. In 1901, the General was placed on display in the Chattanooga Union Depot, which is where Buster Keaton saw it in 1926 and proposed renting it for his film. Sixty years later, in 1961, the locomotive was moved from Chattanooga to the Louisville and Nashville Railroad Shops in Louisville, Kentucky, where it was restored to full operating condition, including modern air brakes and couplers, and converted to burn oil. Throughout the 1960s, the General steamed around the eastern United States as a rolling museum, appearing at the 1964 New York World's Fair and Washington, D.C. On April 12, 1972, 100 years to the day from the original event that started the Great Locomotive Chase, Georgia Governor Jimmy Carter donated the General to the Southern Museum of Civil War and Locomotive History at Kennesaw, Georgia, north of Atlanta. During the Civil War, Kennesaw was called Big Shanty. The current resting place of the General in the museum is only 100 yards from the spot where Andrews Raiders originally stole it. The story has come full circle. In addition to the General, the Southern Museum of Civil War and Locomotive History displays one of the first Congressional Medals of Honor, and there's good reason for it. 80 miles north of Big Shanty and just 18 miles south of the Union Lines at Chattanooga, the General ran out of wood and water and the Raiders abandoned the locomotive, ending the great locomotive chase. They were captured, tried, and found guilty as spies. Eight of the men, including their leader, James J. Andrews, were hanged by the Confederates. 
19 of the 24 Raiders were the first men to be awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor. You can visit the General Locomotive and learn more about Andrews Raiders and the Great Locomotive Chase at the Southern Museum of Civil War and Locomotive History, Kennesaw, Georgia. The Texas was built in 1856 by Danforth Cook & Company of Patterson, New Jersey, the same town where the General was built. It was shipped to the port of Savannah and delivered to the Western and Atlantic Railroad. Like the General, the 440 American type had 60-inch drivers and pulled trains on the W&A's main line between Atlanta and Chattanooga. Unlike the Texas in Keaton's film, which was destroyed in the spectacular trestle collapse, the real Texas survived the Civil War. After the locomotive chase, it was among dozens of Confederate locomotives captured by advancing Union armies and assigned to the United States Military Railroad, USMRR. At the end of the war in 1865, the U.S. Army returned the Texas to the Western and Atlantic, and it served during the Reconstruction era. As the engine worked various Georgia branch lines, its rakish and colorful Civil War appearance disappeared. In 1877, Texas was renumbered 212 and renamed Cincinnati. It was modified from wood to coal burning with a new boiler and diamond stack. The sleek cowcatcher was changed to a step-up switching pilot. In 1895, two years after the General was removed from the Western and Atlantic Vinings Rail Yards in Atlanta and restored, the Texas was retired and parked in the same yards. Unlike the General, which had spent only two years in retirement, for the next 12 years, the Texas sat rusting on a siding. Scheduled for scrapping, a 1907 article in a local Atlanta newspaper revealed the existence of the famous but forgotten engine to the public, and it was saved in the nick of time from the cutting torch. In 1908, the Texas was donated to the city of Atlanta and in 1911 moved to a local park, ironically named Grant Park. It was out of danger but still exposed to the elements. The Texas was moved and placed on display in the basement of the nearby new Battle of Atlanta Cyclorama and Civil War Museum in 1927. The locomotive was cosmetically restored to approximate its Civil War appearance in 1936 as part of a WPA restoration of the Cyclorama painting. While it was now inside and protected, the space it occupied was cramped and obscured by pillars. Construction of the new Atlanta History Center in 2014 prompted the removal from the aging museum building of both the Battle of Atlanta Cyclorama and the Texas. A hole was cut in the museum basement wall and track laid. The Texas was carefully towed out and trucked to the North Carolina Transportation Museum shops where a half million dollar cosmetic restoration to its 1886 appearance was begun. This decision caused some controversy as many felt the engine should be restored to its original Civil War appearance, maintaining its legacy and connection with the General and the Great Locomotive Chase. However, examination by restoration experts at Steam Operations Corporation determined multiple rebuildings and modifications left little of the original Civil War locomotive. As 1886 was the date of the last major rebuild of the Texas, it was determined restoration to this configuration was the best way to retain and conserve as much of the original locomotive as possible also to match the engine to the year the Battle of Atlanta Cyclorama was painted. In 2017, the restored Texas was delivered to her magnificent new home, the 2,000-square-foot Rollin Gallery at the Atlanta History Center. While not its original Civil War appearance, the 1886 Texas, with her diamond stack and dark Russia iron finish highlighted with polished brass, presents a striking and elegant centerpiece for the Locomotion, Railroads and the Making of Atlanta exhibition at the Atlanta History Center. The Battle of Atlanta Cyclorama is as much a part of this story as the locomotives. It was during the Battle of Atlanta that the General was almost destroyed. Before film, cycloramas were the Cinerama and IMAX experiences of their day. A cyclorama was a 360-degree full-color canvas painting hung on a huge circular frame that rotated slowly around the viewer. 
The experts at the Atlanta History Center have faithfully restored and recreated the original viewing experience. The Battle of Atlanta Cyclorama is a massive, stunning work of art. Its immersive experience is as strong today as it was when created in 1886. You can visit the Texas Locomotive and the Battle of Atlanta Cyclorama at the Atlanta History Center, Atlanta, Georgia. Both the General and the Texas are listed on the National Register of Historic Places. Like the Texas, the General does not appear today as it did during the Civil War. Many paintings and lithographs of the Great Locomotive Chase, including those in William Pittenger's book, incorrectly depict the 1862 Civil War era General as it appeared over 20 years later in 1886 with a diamond stack after it was converted to burn coal. This one black and white photograph is the only image that shows the original as-built 1855 Civil War era general with three domes, low belt rails, and a southern style horizontal barred pilot. There are several photographs of the Texas, but all were taken after the locomotive was modified from its original Civil War configuration. We owe our knowledge of the original appearance of the General and the Texas to historian and artist Wilbur Kurtz, who in the early 1900s created accurate paintings based on interviews with veterans of the great locomotive chase. John Ott, an authority on early steam locomotives, has drawn accurate elevations of both engines based on his further research. Neither Keaton's 1926 The General or Walt Disney's 1956 The Great Locomotive Chase show the General or the Texas completely accurately. The filmmakers had to make certain allowances in order to have working locomotives. Buster Keaton acquired several 440 engines from the Oregon Pacific and Eastern Railway. Two were modified to resemble the original General and Texas, but they were logging locomotives with smaller drivers. To learn more about these locomotives, watch part one of the General Stories Behind Buster Keaton's Silent Masterpiece. For the great locomotive chase, Walt Disney used the 1865-built 440 locomotive William Mason from the B&O Railroad Museum to portray the general. The William Mason can be viewed at the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad Museum in Baltimore, Maryland. The 1875-440 veteran Hollywood movie locomotive Inyo was acquired from Paramount Pictures and appeared as the Texas. The Inyo is still operational and can be seen at the Nevada State Railroad Museum in Carson City, Nevada. The museum steams up the Inyo and runs it annually on the 4th of July weekend. We'll explore the William Mason and the Inyo in more detail in a future episode. With today's computer special effects, perhaps a movie of the great locomotive chase with completely accurate locomotives may be produced. Even if this happens, Walt Disney's Great Locomotive Chase will remain one of my favorite movies that will always take me back to my childhood. Nothing better than Davy Crockett on a high steppin' steam locomotive. After Keaton completed filming, the engine that portrayed the General was put back to work on the Oregon Pacific and Eastern Railroad with its tender still lettered W and A R R from the movie. For the next 18 years, it earned its keep hauling lumber trains out of the Oregon forests until it was scrapped in 1941. The fate of the other two locomotives in the film, number five, the Texas, and number eight, the Columbia, is an interesting tale. While the locomotive that plunges into the river at the picture's climax appears to be the Texas, it's actually the Columbia, redressed and repainted to look like the Texas. During filming, it was determined that locomotive number five, the Texas, was in better mechanical condition than number eight, the Columbia, so the engines were swapped. The film crew removed the steam domes, diamond stack, pilot, and nameplate from the Texas and applied them to the Columbia, then repainted it to match the Texas. And number eight was wrecked in the trestle collapse. If you look closely at the tender in this photograph of Keaton on the wreck, you can see the faint ghost of USMRR, the Columbia, behind the overpainted W and ARR. The Texas, or should we say the Columbia, lay rusting in the riverbed until 1942 when it was salvaged for the war effort. 
The saga of the wrecked locomotive doesn't end here. Keaton's original script called for a fourth engine named the Yona to pursue the General onto the burning trestle, with the General crossing safely and the Yona crashing to the river below. Like the General and the Texas, the Yona took part in the real great locomotive chase. To portray the engine, Keaton acquired the 1872 built former Virginian Truck E260 number 16. Originally named Ophir, she was bought in 1881 from the V&T by the Oregon Railway and Navigation Company. During production, it was decided a sequence with two locomotives on a burning trestle was too complex and risky. Keaton rewrote the script using a single locomotive and the Yona does not appear in the finished cut. Considering the existing sequence with the Texas destroyed the locomotive and almost the entire trestle, both the General and the Yona would have been wrecked with no chance for any retakes. The Oregon Pacific and Eastern Railway, which Keaton used in the General, provides locations for two other films. Emperor of the North, released in 1973, starring Lee Marvin, Ernest Borgnine, and Keith Carradine, is a gritty action melodrama set at the height of the Depression. The film was shot using Oregon Pacific and Eastern Railway's 1915 Baldwin 282 Mikado, number 19. Many of the train scenes were filmed at the same locations as Keaton's The General. Scenes from the Rob Reiner coming-of-age film Stand By Me were staged along the OP&E Railroad right-of-way near Cottage Grove. The climax of the film, where the young heroes are almost run over by a train, was shot on the McLeod River Railway at the Lake Britain Bridge near Mount Shasta in Northern California. Cottage Grove, which portrayed Marietta, Georgia in The General, was also the location for the Gonzo Parade in the 1978 comedy Animal House. Buster Keaton's films and The General in Texas from The Great Locomotive Chase, very nearly lost, are now treasured icons of history. They survived through a combination of fate, luck, and the vision of a few individuals who at the time saw their value when others did not. Today, museums, historical societies, film preservation groups, and the dedication of hundreds of volunteers keep the legacy of movies and railroads alive for future generations. If you enjoyed The General, Buster Keaton's Silent Masterpiece Part 2, like us with a thumbs up, share the show with your friends, subscribe to join our growing group, and ring the bell. We'll alert you when our next episode premieres. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Support us on Patreon. Your generous contributions help us tell more stories of locomotion, trains in the movies, and the stories behind them. So until next time, all aboard and action! <laughs>